So one of the reasons Scanpy is so great for single cell analysis is because it's built on top of pandas. But to use all the functionality of Scanpy, you need to know how to use pandas to some extent. So today I'm just going to show some basic filtering, a little bit of advanced filtering, and then some gene-based filtering and subsetting of your AND data. So for this example, I just downloaded the Tabula Sapiens human lung data, and I've just imported it with Scanpy. So we have 35,000 cells and 58,000 genes. And so we can look at the observation data frame, which is a pandas data frame. So if we look at a data.obs, here's all our cell IDs and then various different annotations that came with the Tabula Sapiens data set. So let's start by looking at all the different cell types that are available in this data set. So you see there are a bunch of different cell types. So just to clean this up a little bit, I'm only going to show the top 10. So let's start off with a very basic filtering example here. Let's just filter all the cells that are neutrophils. So let's make a new data frame that just contains neutrophils. So to do this, we can just ask the column to return true or false if it's equal to neutrophil. So again, cell ontology class is just the column name. So where does it equal neutrophil? And this is going to return a list of true or false. That's the length of the data frame, 35,000 cells. So we need to pass this list of true or false to a data itself. So let's put this in brackets. And then if we put a data here and run this, what happens is it only keeps the rows that had true. So there were only 174 true values for neutrophil, and now this a data object only has 174. It's not in place, so if you wanted to save this, we could save something like B data. And now B data only has 174 cells. So that's a simple one column filtering step here. If you wanted to do two columns, what you would do is something similar, but in this case, let's do a data, and then we need to pass true or false. But to get a series with two columns, we need to put parentheses here. And then if we want to do an and statement, we'll do an and. So just to remind myself, let's look at a data obs. So let's do this neutrophil. So we want all the neutrophils. But this time, let's only take the rows that are neutrophils and add the 10x method instead of the drop seek method. Now we'll just pass a data obs dot method, which again is the column name. And let's do the ones equal to 10x. Oops, this is supposed to be a capital X. That's why we got zero cells. So 138 cells were both neutrophils and came from the 10x method in this data set. If you wanted to do or, you could do a bar instead of an and. And then let me just take this one more level up. And what we're going to do is a data and we're going to have an and and an or statement. So what we're going to do, make one parentheses here and it's going to go along with this. But within this one, Let's put an or statement. So it's going to be whatever we pass here that's true and what's true here and the things that are true here are either this or that. So let's just do neutrophil again. So everything that's a neutrophil and let's do everything that's 10x. And then I'm just going to add a line break here so I don't go off the page. And then let's do or donor that's equal to TSP14. So that didn't change the number. What if we did TSP2 donor? So now we have 172 cells. So anyway, you can keep on stringing these together using the parentheses and have as complex of a filtering function like this as you want. So let me show you a couple really useful alternative filtering methods. What if we wanted to take a column? Let's take cell ontology class again. And then we can use the isN function and we can pass a list. So I'm just going to pass L for a list and let's make L equal to neutrophil and basophil. So this is going to return 
is that cell type either neutrophil or basophil? Is it contained in this list here? And then if we pass this to A data. We have 860 cells. And then if you wanted to filter based on some sort of string property, let's take this again here. But now we're going to convert it to a string because I want to run contains. So which cell labels contain this string? So let's try T cell. So 2071, let's look at what we got. So we matched for T cell. We also got goblet cell here, but I only want everything that's T cell, like CD8 positive T cells, CD4 positive T cells. So using what we learned just a minute ago, let me filter out goblet cell. So this time, instead of equals, I'm going to do not equal. And then I'm just going to take this. Oops, not equal. So if we look at OBS now, we should only have anything that's a T cell. And then one more important note on all of these filtering things, we're keeping everything that's true when we do this. If we add a tilde, we're gonna keep everything that's false instead. So instead of 860, we have 34,000. Get rid of that, go back to 860. But that works on any of these. All right, let's get into a little bit more advanced filtering. Advanced in this case just means more customizable. So we're going to make something called, I don't, it doesn't matter what it's called. I'm going to call it fancy filter. And we're just going to pass one column value. I'll just call it X. And then, I don't know, let's pass the number of genes. So it's kind of a toy example, but let's do is x divided by 5. Is it greater than 1,000? Of course, we could have just done as x greater than 5,000, but whatever. If it is true, we're going to return true. And if not, we're going to return false. Oh, got to put if. So now we can take this function we just made and apply it to a column. So let's do a data.obs and then all name was in genes and then we use the map function and then we're just going to pass the name of our function fancy filter and again it just returned this series of true and false so if we pass that to a data we now have this filtered 4000 cell a data object so this works with one column but what if you wanted to pass multiple columns let's just show the columns again so let's make a very fancy filter and let's pass three columns here let's do donor number of counts umi and the number of genes again i'm just going to make a toy example that doesn't really do anything too crazy and we're going to set this equal to x here so we're going to pass three columns and it's going to get split up here you don't have to worry about x anymore we'll get these three new variables so let's just make a simple little if statement here. If donor ends with 14 and n counts UMI divided by the number of genes is greater than 10, we'll return true. If not, we'll return false. So now what we have to do is we have to pass a data frame with only three columns to instead of map the apply function so what we're going to do is subset on three columns a data so a data dot ob and then the three column names i'm just going to copy and paste these so you see we have the observation data frame but only these three columns and then we can do apply instead of map and we need to apply the very fancy filter and we need to pass axis equals one and again we just get a boolean series here so we can pass that to a data and apparently only 32 cells passed our filter here so by using a function like this you have a lot of flexibility you can get pretty advanced but what if we wanted to look at the expression of individual genes and filter cells based on those? So I'm just going to do one simple example, and then hopefully you can apply this to whatever problem you have. First, we need NumPy. 
And then within the a data object, there's something called var names, which is just a list of all the genes. So similar to what we were doing, we can say, let's pick one gene. So where does var names equal cdk n to a? So it's a Boolean array that we can pass to the function numpy where. And we get the index value. And then we can extract that like this. And the gene data is saved under a data dot x, which is just a, well, in this case, a sparse numpy array. And to get a slice of all the values in each cell for CDK into a, we need to pass this and then the gene lock. So you see we have 35,000 cells and one column of gene values. Since it's a sparse array, we need to do to array and now we have an array of the actual values and then we can say greater than zero which we can then pass to a data and get the 1500 cells that were positive for this gene so i hope you find some of these useful these are the filtering methods that i use all the time and one of the reasons i think that scanp and python are really great for single cell analysis